Hey guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at two computers that we've seen in previous videos, but uh, there's some tweaks and some changes I wanted to do to them, and I wanted to share that with you guys, so stay tuned for this video. Hey guys, today I wanted to revisit two computers that I've already done individual videos on. Uh, actually, this guy here, I've actually done uh, two videos on this computer here. So, uh, this one is our, uh, this was our ultimate RD RAM socket 423, kind of weirdo uh, Willamette based Pentium 4 system. Uh, I did two videos on this. I did one that was kind of like an ultimate year 2000 setup, and then kind of recently I did another one. Um, where I, I upped it another year and we did an ultimate year 2001 setup. And um, I, I don't know why. This computer is like weird. I have better, <laughs> I have computers that do the job better than this thing. Um, but I don't know why I, I like this thing. It, maybe just because it's kind of weird. Um, it, it's, I don't know. But anyways, I wanted to make it a little bit weirder. Uh, so I just did a video card upgrade on this, which we'll talk about uh, in a minute when we go over this computer. So if you want to know more about this machine and the motherboard and the parts, uh, check out the other videos on it. Um, I, I'll put the links in the description. Uh, or if, if you really want to look for it, it's like Ultimate 2000 uh, RD RAM build. And, and then I have another one that's just 2001. But I'll put links in the description for the videos on this machine. But uh, really we're just changing the video card in this guy today uh, just to make it even weirder. Uh, and, and this is another machine that I did a recent video on. This is my uh, IBM uh, 300PL. Uh, I have two videos on an IBM 300PL. Uh, the older one is a different model. Uh, so it, this is the newer one. So this is the one with the AGP. I'll also put a link in the description uh, for the video on this guy. And this guy, we're, we're just we're changing the video uh, card and uh, we're also changing the sound card. I can make what this does probably better if I just made a tower, but I don't know. I really like this case and the IBM, and I might make this one of my main Windows 98 machines. So I wanted to do a few little upgrades um, on this machine as well. So we'll uh, take a look at that as well in this video. So we're going to start, and we'll uh, start with this guy here, and if you haven't already noticed um, <laughs> what our upgrade is, uh, you could take a look down here at the case badge, right there, our case badge, and I uh, just want to say right off the bat, uh, for a lot of your case badge needs, go on eBay and uh, look up the seller uh, Geekenspiel. Uh, he has a lot of cool case badges and stickers for all occasions. All right, so here we are again. If you remember last time we seen this machine, it was a video. It was like my ultimate socket 423 uh, 2001 build. We have a socket 423 motherboard in there. Interesting motherboard. Wasn't around very long uh, with the early Pentium 4s. And we have the king of crap in there. <laughs> the fastest of the, the Willamette CPUs. Uh, we have the 2 gigahertz Willamette. Uh, Pentium 4. The early Pentium 4s were not really great CPUs. Um, I'm not sure there's many people out there that consider them great CPUs. But they existed and they're kind of interesting and this motherboard is interesting and it uses like RD RAM which wasn't around for too long and it's kind of weird and this whole machine is kind of weird. And that's sort of why I'm doing this video because I wanted to make it just a little bit weirder. Uh, so uh, for my 2001 build uh, we were running what was considered maybe the greatest graphics card of the year 2001, and we had a GeForce 3 uh, TI 500. Uh, there's some debate on if that was the best card or if the Radeon, uh, high-end Radeon of that year was. Um, but I went with the TI 500 just because I'm a little more used to uh, NVIDIA, and, well, that's the graphics card I had on hand. Uh, but that card wasn't weird enough for that year, for, for this machine in my opinion. It, it was the king, but it wasn't the king of being different. So uh, I looked through like what cards I had on hand and what I wanted to put in here, and uh, I have a Cairo 2 
the Hercules Profit, Hercules 3D Profit 4500, and the Hercules 3D Profit 4500 did indeed come out in 2001. And uh, like I said, it's not as powerful as the GeForce, but it's still uh, competitive. You may remember the video card. I did feature it uh, in a video a couple years back. I put it in a gateway system, although it wasn't really the focal point of that video. And since I put out that video, there has been a few notable YouTubers that have done videos specifically on this graphics card. So if you want to see some more in-depth analysis of this video card, uh, you could do a search. There's a couple videos out there that are, that are really good. Um, but yeah, we're just going to take a look at the card real quick in this machine, and uh, then we're just going to see play a couple games on it and uh, just just kind of check it out kind of a laid back uh, second or third look at this machine and uh, the new video card in there I still have this gigabyte uh, badge sticker on this case although it does not have a gigabyte motherboard in it anymore I uh, <laughs> just nothing to replace it with so uh, but yeah let's take a look at the uh, card real quick all right so here's our card with the Cairo 2 chip uh, right there, the 4500 uh, chip with the heat sink removed. Um, now before, remember we just had this, uh, well, when I used this in a previous video, um, the fan had died. Here's the, the cooler. Uh, it's that neat blue cooler there. So I just had the, the heat sink was the only thing uh, on this. And I basically had a PCI uh, slot sort of fan next to it that was blowing the air on it and it worked okay but of course it it took up a slot an extra slot and it it wasn't a very elegant solution um, but it was a little bit hard to find a fan replacement because the holes here are a little bit different than than you know most of what you find it I think there's something like five millimeters um, apart where a lot of the other ones especially after this uh, aftermarket fans were for like five point five etc etc so it's hard to find uh, things that fit but I did find this uh, a Titan a TTC uh, CUV1 uh, AB whatever and you could take the fan out of that and it fits now I haven't put the screws in or put it in yet but it fits perfectly um, so it, it makes a good fan replacement if you need a fan replacement for your uh, Cairo 2 card and I suppose you could also use the heat sink that came with it too, if you didn't want to use the, uh, the, the blue one. Now this one feels a little heftier. Uh, it, it certainly looks like, I think this is a copper one. And I don't know for sure, but I think this one's aluminum. Uh, so you might get some better uh, results with this one, because I believe copper transfers the heat away better than aluminum does. Just the aluminum's a little lighter. Um, but I don't know, I like... I like the blue look of the original, and this chip doesn't get super hot anyway, so I think with the fan and the original heat sink and putting some quality uh, thermal paste on here, it, it's going to be better than new as far as, uh, you know, heat sink transferring the heat away properties, so um, we'll see. So here is it completed with the new fan. Uh, seems to work pretty well. The one thing is it uses a different connector than what is on the card. Uh, the card has a two prong, and the connector here is three. You could probably use breadboard wires uh, and connect it there, but uh, I'm just using a fan connector on the motherboard, and uh, and it works just fine. Um, now, a little bit about the Cairo 2. I'm not like a super technical expert on these things, but I do know it, it was a little bit different from other cards at the time, uh, how it rendered things, uh, where most cards kind of rendered everything at once that was on the screen. The Cairo 2 chip took more of a efficiency approach, where it only rendered what was visible on the screen at the time. That's the gist of how it worked. Um, so even at lower clock speeds, it was able to compete okay with you know more powerful cards uh, like the G-Forces and the Radeons of the time. Um, not quite as powerful as those cards, but because of its efficiency, it was actually pretty competitive, at least as a budget card. Uh, probably better than a lot of people would expect it to be. It supposedly also had pretty good image quality. Uh, it lacked a couple features like T and L, but I believe the line from the Cairo 2 people at the time was that uh, processors could do TNL better than any GPU could anyway, so it really wasn't a must-have feature for a, a video card. But yeah, I think this was a little bit different of a card to put in this machine. 
Um, so I'm going to install it, we'll see some gameplay, and then we'll wrap it up. And uh, something to just keep in mind when you're looking at this capture footage, my uh, capture situation, my whole uh, video capture station and setup, it's always under some sort of issue. So, um, so right now everything, it looks obviously great on my Sony CRT, but when I'm capturing it over here, uh, the image is just coming up like dark. Uh, colors are all sort of muted. And I tried watching some videos and changing some things and adjusting the gamma and the brightness and nothing. It just, it looks worse when I do that. So just uh, keep in mind, my capture setup sucks. Well, actually, my equipment's decent. It's just my ability to, to uh, tweak things and make it look great uh, sucks. So just, just keep that in mind. The image actually is, is actually really nice. It's just... Now those games seem to work pretty well, perfectly fine, but I had a lot of games that just gave me a lot of trouble, and the the Cairo 2 and the Prophet 3D, is, as far as I know, isn't known to be a, a troublesome card, uh, but I had a lot of games, like Colin McRae Rally 04, whenever I would try to play that game, I would just get this garbled graphical mess, and there was a lot of examples that I tried where this happened. And another example here is the Comanche 4, the... Uh, the demo that I always, you know, try to run as a benchmark. Uh, it would, it seemed like it would start just fine, and it would load the mission, and then I would get uh, an error, the sysdump.tex error, and I just could never get this thing uh, to work with this card for uh, whatever reason. I don't know if it's a driver issue or or what. I'm using the latest drivers, standard driver, but um, I, I just had a lot of games that gave me trouble for whatever reason. Uh, now, No One Lives Forever 2 is another game that just wouldn't work. Now, that game has like a built-in performance test, and showing right now is what it looked like when I would have the settings on medium or high. Uh, kind of weird graphical artifacts, weird things going on. That's not how it's supposed to look. Um, and if I had it on high or medium, it would do that. Now, if I would set it to low, uh, it would look fairly normal, like we're going to see in a second. I'm going to set it to uh, low in, in a moment. Alright, so here we go with low, and then you run the test, and it looks uh, normal on low. Here, when I run it here in a second, 
there we go. Um, so on low settings, it looks normal. Uh, although when I tried to run the game uh, afterwards on low settings, it just crashed on me. So I don't know what's going on here exactly. Uh, like I said, I'm using the latest drivers. This card isn't known to be troublesome as far as I know. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, is it enough RAM? I mean, some of these, these games should work. I don't think it's a RAM limitation uh, for the video card. So I... I'm not really sure uh, what's going on here with some of these games. So I don't know. Maybe maybe the Cairo 2 based cards are are difficult. I don't know if someone if someone could tell me um, if they have an idea what the problem is here. Uh, just let me let me know. Um, yeah, here's the game. I'm trying to run it, and then I believe it cra yeah it just crashes to Windows. All right, now for the second part of our video, our upgrade video. Uh, if you remember this guy, this is our IBM Personal Computer 300 PL. And uh, we're going to be upgrading the video in this guy, and uh, it's been something I've been wanting to do for a while. Before we had that ATI Rage, I think 128 in there, and that's a that's an okay car. That's an okay choice for Windows 98. But uh, I I looked for this machine for so long with this kind of case because I like the aesthetic. I, I really want this to see more use in my collection. So I'm thinking about making this like my main period correct Windows 98 machine. So you know, 1998-1999 uh, sort of parts, the CPU speed and parts, so um, that's why I'm, I want to upgrade the video card in here to something else um, that's going to be a little bit, little bit more powerful, uh, a little bit better in my opinion, uh, so this can be like, you know, my mainstay uh, period correct Windows 98 machine. I, I have several Windows 98 machines, um, I, you know, I have like an overpowered one, uh, from like very late in the Windows 98 era, uh, you know, I have a, a K6 uh, based one. I, I have a couple of them. Uh, some I use a lot more than others, um, and I'm gonna have videos on those hopefully, eventually. Uh, but yeah, I, I just want to make this one kind of like my main period correct guy. So let's take a look at the card I am going to put in here. All right, so here is the card I am installing in this. This is a um, a diamond. This is a diamond viper. Uh, V770U, uh, so this is with the um, TNT2 Ultra uh, chip on here. Uh, I'm not going to go too detailed into this card because uh, I'm actually using this T a TNT2 Ultra in a different machine I'm going to do a video on. I, I want to go a little bit more in depth on it in that video, um, but th these cards are pretty hard to find. They're like the top of the line for the TNT2 uh, line and I just wanted to go with the TNT2 for this machine. Um, you know, there's debate. You could go with this. Uh, another great option, maybe even a better option in some people's case, is a Voodoo 3. Um, but I wanted to go with the TNT2. Uh, there's a couple reasons. Again, I'll go more into those reasons in another video. Uh, but you know, it, it has some advantages. 32-bit color. Uh, it's still really fast and compatible. It has improved textures in certain games over the Voodoo. It, it doesn't do glide games. It doesn't have the special the glide API, but but I have so many other machines that have Voodoo cards in them, that's not really an issue for me. So I, I think this is a really a great card uh, for like a Windows 98 machine. And uh, you could go higher. Um, now if you notice, this is in that, uh, I believe, NLX format, which is what this, the, for, the form factor of this motherboard in this machine. Um, and there are faster cards in that format. Uh, I believe a little bit faster. I believe they went up to the, the card right above this, the uh, GeForce 256, the SDR version. I believe it's like an Elsa Razor 2 or Razor 2. Um, it's that, the, the GeForce 2, 256. But, uh, well, one, this is cheaper and easier to find than that. And also that card has some compatibility issues with certain games. It's, it, it's a little too much. So I, I wanted to go with this one just because it had better compatibility uh, with Windows 98 games. Um, than the GeForce, and so that's why we went with this one. You you may notice this is not a stock fan on this guy. Uh, I believe this is actually originally a CPU fan, but uh, when I got this card, these cards are quite expensive, and I think I got this card partly. I got it cheaper because there was an issue with the fan, uh, so I didn't pay nearly as much as what these usually go for uh, on eBay, um, and I happen to have. Uh, a fan that this ha fan happened to fit on there uh, just fine. So while we're on the subject, though, I want to talk real quick about, mm, I guess, tips for finding possibly expensive cards. So I have an example here. So we've got this card here. 
Now, this uh, is the Intel i740 chip here under here. Uh, it, interesting card, uh, kind of a failure from Intel uh, getting into the graphics card, at least the discrete uh, card market, but interesting card nonetheless. Um, so when you are looking for kind of an, I don't want to, this isn't necessarily exotic, but it is a little different from your NVIDIA or ATI from the time. Uh, but this goes for a lot of different cards. If you're looking for like kind of weird chipsets, maybe like a Verite rendition, or things like that that might be hard to find. Um, if you put in, say, Intel i740, you might only get a couple results. And a lot of those cards are going to be like really overpriced and expensive. We're talking eBay here. Uh, really expensive. And probably like half of them are going to be in Russia. I don't know. For some reason, there's a lot of old video cards and computer parts sitting around in Russia and Eastern Europe um, if you go on eBay. But the kind of a trick you can do, Diamond Multimedia used like every graphics chip under the sun in the 90s, the late 90s. Um, they have tons of different lines of cards, like the Stealth and the Speedster and the Viper. And um, you can go on Wikipedia, just put in Diamond Multimedia, and you go, they'll have a list of all the cards and the chips they use. So instead of going on eBay and putting in like i740, you can find uh, what kind of, what the card, the model was. I forget what this one is. Let's take a look here. You can, uh, Stealth, the Stealth 3. So you can put in uh, Diamond Multimedia Stealth 3, uh, I don't know what that is, D460 or something like that. You just put in the model number and you usually will get a lot more results. And they made a ton, Diamond made a ton of these different cards. And you'll usually find them much cheaper too. Um, like I mentioned earlier, Verite, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but the Verite rendition card, um, I put that in, they were all really expensive. Lo and behold, uh, Diamond Multimedia made a card with that chip. I put in that model number instead, and I found one. Uh, it took a little searching, but I eventually found one for a reasonable price. So that's always a little trick you can use if you're looking for certain video cards uh, on eBay. Now, that doesn't necessarily hold true for all cards. That It didn't hold true for the uh, TNT2 Ultra card here, the Diamond uh, Viper 770U. Um, you can put in, uh, I usually just put in 77, like Diamond uh, Viper 770, and you get a ton comp. A lot of them were the standard TNT uh, cards. Now, you can tell the difference because the standard ones just have, oh, did you hear that? That was my chihuahua sneezing down there. Now, the standard ones just have a heat sink, but you know from the Ultra versions will have a fan, and it's not stuck on top of the heat sink, it's actually kind of like indented in the heat sink. So unless someone went through a ton of trouble of removing the heat sink and putting on another, if you see one with the fan, it's probably almost definitely a 770U. If they don't, you know, ask them to confirm it though on the back, uh, it should say like it says right here, 770U right there. Um, but these are real expensive. Uh, people, I guess, seem to know what these things are and they, the U's, uh, on eBay will usually go for under a, or over a hundred dollars. Uh, sometimes you can find them for like 70 or 80. Um, I paid under 50 for this, uh, under 40 actually. Uh, I, I guess I just got lucky. <laughs> so, but again, probably the fan uh, being broke on it had something to do with it. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm glad I, I got one of these cards. This is, this is I think it's going to make a uh, great upgrade for this machine. And, uh, don't forget to break off that little piece. Uh, it was hitting the built-in VGA connector there, so uh, I did break it off, and it fits just fine right now. And hopefully, yeah, that's that's going to reach, so that should be good. And uh, our CPU here, um, I think I was using the same CPU in the video I did specifically on this machine, but using the 800 megahertz Pentium 3, uh, I believe this was the fastest Pentium 3 for 1999. Um, and yeah, this should be more than enough power for most Windows 98 uh, games on like high settings, at least uh, up to the year 2000. So this should be pretty sufficient for a period correct uh, kind of heyday, uh, middle of the Windows 98 era uh, CPU. And of course, uh, I always like to put on like case stickers or badges when I can. So here's a the NVIDIA TNT2 Ultra. Now this kind of sticker uh, never came out in the time. Uh, this is I guess an aftermarket uh, sticker. Again, um, 
Geekenspiel on eBay. You can get these off him for a good price. Uh, here is, it, now it already had the Intel Pentium 3 sticker uh, that was originally on there, but it was looking a little ragged, so I wanted to freshen it up a little bit, so we stuck a new one on there, so looks nice. I like it. I like this machine. It could use a little retro bright maybe on this top case here. Maybe I'll do that one of these days, uh, but I, I like this guy. So here's a weird one. Um, I was going to do some video capture for the uh, TNT2 Ultra in the IBM PL300, and uh, I get an invalid format error. I've, I've never, ever encountered this before. I, it's just a TNT2 card. I can't imagine there's anything, like, weird that it's outputting. Um, it's going to the CRT just fine. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on here. I, I tried restarting everything. I keep getting this invalid uh, format. Now, uh, if I restart it, it, it shows the post and everything. Uh, it shows the Windows splash screen as Windows load, but once it boots into Windows, I get this invalid format. And I even tried uh, the different capture card I have, hooking it up through VGA, and uh, I would just get no signal, um, or it would give me weird. I had, at one point, uh, you could see the screen like a little up at the... It's weird. I, I don't know what's going on. Invalid format's weird, because it should just turn it to a, a going through the HDMI it should just be trans uh, changing the analog signal into a 1080p digital signal and it should just read it um, that's part of the reason like it, it reads everything I've never had an issue doing captures this way um, that's weird okay so I, I guess I'm just gonna have to break out the uh, LCD and do it that way uh, very weird and 3D Mark uh, 99 gives us pretty good results, so uh, pretty happy with this. This video card's doing uh, pretty good, uh, looks nice and sharp, and uh, yeah, those were pretty decent, decent speeds.
All right, guys, so that is the video. Uh, that is the results. Uh, again, not really going to go too in-depth on them. Uh, I'm pretty happy with both of these systems. The, uh, the, Cairo, the Cairo video card, it's actually uh, pretty nice for, you know, what was kind of considered a, a budget card. It, it's surprisingly powerful. It's, it's a nice card. Uh, not necessarily the best pick for the time, but if you want to go for something a little different, maybe a little bit weird, you might want to consider the uh, Power uh, VR uh, Cairo based cards, the Cairo, Cairo 2. As for the IBM, yeah, I'm pretty happy. I'm happy I found that uh, TNT2 Ultra uh, card in the NLX. Uh, I believe it's NLX uh, form factor. Hard to find at a decent price, so I'm, I'm happy I picked one of those up. Uh, this is just a good all around machine. Uh, 1999, sort of your classic uh, Windows 98 rig. Uh, not the fastest Windows 98 computer you can put together. Uh, I'll do a video on something like that uh, down the road a little bit, but I don't know. I just I just like this machine. I like the form factor. I like that it's a little bit weird <laughs> with the, the motherboard and the form factor and like the AGP slots off to the side. It's really, really kind of bizarre. Um, layout but yeah I, I like it and with the video card in there and that the uh sound blaster live oh yeah i forgot to mention in my video and i'm in editing now and i've kind of tucked that computer away so i don't feel like pulling it out um i did install for a sound card i did a sound blaster live uh value um nothing too super spectacular but it's what i had laying around it's still a decent card does eax uh good dos compatibility it's a decent uh period correct uh sound card uh, there, I just found a random image there that's pretty much what mine looks like with the 1999 date code on the PCB and uh, yeah there's a lot of other choices you could go with the Oreo Vortex 2 um, those are really the two big ones the Oreo Vortex 2 and the Sound Blaster live for the time I went with the live for this particular machine good compatibility sound card it's it's actually quite a decent uh, you know, 90s Windows 98 machine. So I am happy with that. And I'm happy you guys joined me for this video. Um, I know the lighting has sucked uh, in my recent videos. I talked about that. I, I do have some lighting on the way, so hopefully that will help things a little bit. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. If you like this kind of content, uh, click on that bell and subscribe and hit like and all that crap that people tell you to do all the time. But um, this is just a hobby for me. I, it's just fun. I like doing it. And I like sharing it with you guys. And if you guys enjoy it too, that's great. I'm, I'm glad you guys are coming along for the ride. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.